Welcome to another video by Lame Creations Log Analysis Made Easy. This is another request from uh, my subscribers and members, and they were asking, can I show examples of using Heck to uh, get data into Splunk? And so I'm going to give two different examples. I have two different systems that are going to generate data and send to Splunk using Heck. So what I've got, I've got my Splunk here. The first thing we want to do is we want to turn on the listener on Splunk. So we'll come in here, we're going to go Settings, Data Inputs. The other thing is, we want to make sure that we have the firewall allowing the logs through. So if you've got a firewall on, you want to make sure that whatever port you're using for heck, you've got that open through the firewall. I'm not going to go through that, just remember that you'll need to go to your firewall and make sure the logs can get through. If I come into this Data Inputs, Settings, Data Inputs, I can find this HTTP Event Collector, which is what heck, it's short for heck. If I come in here, I'm going to go Let's just go look at what I've got. I have three, three on at the moment. But the first thing you want to do is you want to check over here in global settings. Often you'll find that it is disabled. You want to make sure that your heck is enabled. And then if you want to set default source types and indexes of the stuff coming through, you can. I don't see much purpose in it. I'm going to control it elsewhere. But if you need to and you need to set a source type, there you go. You need to set a default index by all means. Um, and then I like my enable SSL on, but you don't need to. I mean, again, if you want, don't want your stuff encrypted, that's fine. You don't have to turn it on. Uh, and then I noticed by default, I have 8088. That's the default port for heck. And I'm going to leave it as that. So I want to make sure that my firewall for my, uh, my operating system does not have port 8088 blocked. Now I'm going to hit save, making sure that this is enabled. And then I'm going to create a brand new token. So I first secure in the global settings and I make sure it's on. Then I'm going to make a new token and I'm going to call this YouTube Heck. Again, that's why I don't bother to overwrite anything. I can do a source name, a description, output group. I can even do an index or acknowledgement, which means before you have to make sure the indexer actually um, ingests the stuff, writes the stuff before you do anything. I'm not going to mess with that. Just leave it alone. If I hit next, I go to my input settings. Here, again, this is where I can set my source type. I'm going to come in and I'm going to call it JSON. Sure. Grab the JSON. That will be my log type coming in. Um, what indexes do I want to put this stuff into? Maybe I want to just put it in the Windows event log. Cool, why not? Maybe I want to create a new event, a new index. Any way you want to go at it. Just make sure that you got your, your logs there. What's the default if you need to create a new one? And then I hit next, review. And if I go hit submit, I see a little token value here. And I can just select that right now, copy it, and I'm good to go. I can also go settings, data inputs, in case you don't copy it right then. If I go to my HTTP event collector, and I click YouTube heck, That's not there. Okay. Um, right, right there, right in front of my eyes. There's my token value. And so I can go copy it there. And then what I'm going to do, so that's what you need to do. You need to set up a listener for your YouTube heck. I mean, for your heck. You can change ports. So you could have different uh, stuff. Like I'm going to send, set up my Cribble instance and my Coralite instance to send heck in. I might send one to use 8088, one to use. 8,000, uh, whatever, and I could just change the uh, the port. I mean, as you do these things, you can change the port. I don't have to use 8088. I can, when I make a new one, actually in this case, it's fine because it's going to be using the, uh, it uses that token. So you, you wouldn't change, the, you wouldn't change the port for each input. My bad. Sorry, that was me speaking without thinking my, what I was trying to say. Anyway, so I'm, I got my HTTP event collector. It's going to use these token values and know what to do with them, what index it's going to send to, et cetera, et cetera. And so then what I need to do, 
let's go set up the Corelight sensor. My Corelight sensor, when I come in to my Corelight, there's going to be right set on here to export the logs. I can go use heck and I go put the IP address in and I leave it at 8088. Maybe I want to put the service collector. What I'm just going to leave it at 8088. And then I'm going to paste in my heck token from my collector. Copy that. Paste it in. I use the right IP address. I can tell it what index to send it to. So that would probably be that would be that Windows event log. Um, again, even if I don't, it'll fix. It'll change it. It'll flip it for me to Windows event log. I, I could change these fields, but just basically look at what your HEC exporter has enabled and you just set it up. So you have your URI, your HEC token, etc. If I want to do it in Cribble, same principle. I'm coming in here. I find the HEC exporter destination. There's Splunk HEC. I'm going to come add a destination. I'm going to give it some name. Give it an endpoint, so it would be my IP address there. Eight eighty eight services collector event. We're good there. Then I, I paste in my token and I hit save. That's as far as I have to go. It's always pretty much the same concept. You find you set up Splunk to listen, you make sure the firewall is open. You then come in, you make sure the global settings that HEC is enabled. You, make sure you, uh, ch make sure you know what port you're using. And then you come in and you make a new one. And you follow it through, give it a name, set the token, grab the token, go to the tool that you're using, you'll put the IP address in, then dump the token, and hit save. And that's, that is exporting using HEC. Hope that helps. Hope that helps you move from being a Splunk, uh, lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. And I hope you keep coming back and watching the channel. You can help support this channel by liking and subscribing. And I appreciate it. Talk to you later.